Los Missile, Supersonic Missile Acquisition ng Pilipinas. Uh, malaking bagay po ito. Uh, hindi kailangan na maging geeky ka uh, sa matters of military affairs para ma-appreciate mo yung relevance ng issue na yan. Actually, since last week pa yan nag, uh, nag-headline. So, may sinulat ako na pinost ako dyan uh, yung The Real Deal Behind Selling Brahmos to the Philippines no? published by Asia Times. I have more articles coming up on this issue of Brahmos and it's more strategic significance uh, for different newspapers around the world. no So, uh, abangan yan. Uh, I have more analysis on that issue. So, pag-usapan natin ito. No? So, first of all, kudus. Kudus, no? To both sides. Actually, na-interview ko yung Indian ambassador to the Philippines uh, last month. At he was, uh, you know, he essentially confirmed without saying it, no? Uh, because it was still, hindi pa na, ano eh, na, hindi pa nilagay yung final touches dun sa kontrata. But we're talking about a very big contract of uh, $375 million. Uh, we're talking about supersonic missiles, the first acquisition by the Philippines. Almost certainly madideploy itong mga to for our defense territory territory at maritime defense dyan sa West Philippine Sea. Uh, itong Brahmos na yan ay jointly developed by the Russians and the Indians uh, back in the days and it came into service for the Indians uh, starting 2005. At very versatile ito. Uh, it can be uh, deployed from sea, from uh, from from warships, from submarines, under sea, and from fighter jets. No? At meron siyang max speed of 3. So, multiple times the speed of sound no yung kanyang speed and uh, you know so for the philippines uh mukhang we're moving towards developing yung tinatawag na minimum deterrence capability uh we can use different terms for that see si prime minister likwani of singapore used to uh talk about poison shrimp yung idea na sige ta- try mo kaming kainin kahit malit kami mapo poison ka naman di ba or uh there's another term i think which is much more appropriate in this case porcupine um, um, doctrine or strategy kung saan, sige, kainin mo kami, meron kami spikes, di ba? So, yes, mas malit ng Pilipinas kumpara dun sa mga ibang karibal natin, especially, of course, China. Actually, mas malaki din sa Malaysia uh, and Vietnam. I mean, if you look at population-wise. But, you know, in terms of cap- capability, of course, medyo napag-iwanan ng Pilipinas over the past half a century. In the 1960s, we were actually the most developed uh, armed forces in Southeast Asia. But, Yung nangyar 1970s, yung, yung war sa Mindanao, etc. Uh, so, na bug down talaga yung AFP natin. No? Uh, at alam natin some of our neighbors, or at least one of our neighbors, were taking advantage of the situation of the war in Mindanao back in the days para ma bug down tayo. Para hindi natin sila sugurin dun sa isang place sa kanila na kini claim natin. So, you can imagine. But this was back in the days, no? So now, nagka-catch up na tayo. So may AFP Modernization Act tayo na pinasa pa no, ni President Ramos 1990s ito in response dun sa nangyari sa Mischief Reef especially. Uh, pero unfortunately, medyo nakapost tayo sa budget nun. Actually, we were hoping to get F-18 Hornet fighters, Super Hornet fighters nung uh, 1990s pa lang. Pero nangyari yung Asian financial crisis and then ito na, may ERAP ka na, may ETSA ka na, tapos may Arroyo, my goodness. And then alam mo yung mga corruption scandals, coups nung, nung panahon ni President Arroyo. So really, it was 2011, 2012, especially after nung Scarborough crisis na talagang nag-follow through tayo dito sa AFP Modernization Initiative na sinimula ni uh, former President Ramos. No? So in 2012, President Aquino uh, oversaw the passage of AFP Modernization Act, yung revised version, at nag-allocate tayo ng initially hundreds of millions of dollars. Hindi lang yung budget ng AFP, no? pero yung budget para makabili ka ng mga uh, yung mga talagang bago at saka cutting edge na mga armas no uh, para palakasin talaga natin yung sandatan lakas natin lalong-lalo na yung uh, yung navy natin at air force kasi nga archipelagic country style yung coastline natin as as, as long yan ng russias no uh, kasi ar- archipelagic tayo di ba? so we really need to develop yung ating naval and air force capabilities uh, pero may three horizons yan. No? So, yung first horizons, yun yung medyo na-cover ng uh, uh, Aquino administration. No? Uh, at na-allocate yung budget up until 2017 at least. So, pagpasok ni Pangulo Duterte, tinuloy ito, in fairness, uh, dun sa second horizon. no So, three five-year terms yan. Fifteen, three-phase, multi-billion dollar acquisition program. So, panon ni President Aquino, in fairness sa kanila, uh, bumalik tayo dun sa medyo supersonic fighter uh, era. Hindi pa... Generation 4, 4.5 level na super. Parang nag-FA-15 fighters tayo from 
from Korea. So that will prepare us hopefully to get F-16 fighters or F-15 fighters uh, from, from our allies in the near future, or if not, at least in uh, sub fighters from Sweden. So, uh, prepare Taijan. But now, this is the second phase. We have been building up our naval capabilities. My mga frigate style na, na kinokuwa. I think BRP Rizal, yung isang uh, recently that came into uh, operation. Uh, we're trying to get more uh, warships and frigates, hopefully, from our Korean friends. And Korea has been very, very helpful to the Philippines. Uh, you know, efforts para ma develop natin yung minimum deterrence capability, yung porcupine, yung po poison shrimp uh, effort natin, no? Uh, but ito mga strategic missile acquisitions ay napakamahalaga because kung titingnan mo, uh, ang China po ay mas mahina sa Amerika, at least as of now, no? Uh, pagdating dun sa kanyang uh, uh, yung overall capabilities in terms of quality and overall quantity, so yung number of aircraft carriers ng US, for instance, although China has more warships or vessels at its naval and paramilitary disposal than US. But, but in many ways, ang ginawa ng China para maka Bawe, at least for now, until mag fully catch up sila, which is not impossible considering China's resources and trajectory. Uh, ang ginagawa nila is nag develop sila ng tinatawag na anti access air denial, so asymmetric capabilities yun. No? Kung so, kung hindi tayo pa mag away na harap harapan, magana pa na ibang discarte. No? So, ang ginagawa ng China is uh, instead of going aircraft versus aircraft pa, uh, or fighter jets versus fighter jets pa, although they're getting there kasi nag develop na sila ng dalawang fifth generation fighter. Uh, programs in fairness to China, uh, although they look very similar to those of the U.S. But anyways, let's not go there. Uh, yung ginagawa nila is nagdevelop sila ng mga uh, yung uh, yung uh, yung cruise killers nila, no? Yung mga uh, meron sila mga dinidevelop na mga uh, anti-access air denial ballistic capabilities. Uh, na yung mga missiles, no? Yung mga Daifeng, no? Na pwede tumama dun sa mga American aircrafts, no? So hindi nila siguro makaya pa head to head yung warship to warship, pero through advanced, you know, yung mga ballistics, uh, you know, uh, uh, carrier killer ballistic uh, missiles, missiles, pwede nilang ano yun yung America, no? Uh, Pairapan na America to intervene in this part of the world in an event of a conflict. Now, we're not gonna go too deep into this anti-access air denial issue. What I'm saying is that, guess what? Pwede rin gawin ng mga mas malit na bansa sa China naman. So, South Korea, Vietnam, yung mga countries na mas malit, yung kanilang sandatan lakas na hindi nila alam, alam nila na hindi nila matatapatan yung China on a head-to-head -head basis, sila rin nagde-develop ng asymmetric capability. So, yung parang ginagawa ng China sa US, pwede rin gawin ng mga mas malit na bansa sa China. Kaya nga dito, papasok yung uh, kaulugan ng mga uh, uh, missile systems na yan, no? at saka yung BrahMos missile system. Now, let's be realistic. Kasi, uh, katulad ng point out ng isang uh, Filipino analyst, no, um, etong BrahMos na ito, uh, yung numbers na makukuha natin ay medyo limitado. At para maging effective yan against China, mukhang we need more numbers of uh, mas maraming kailangan natin. So, ito yung analysis ni Gabriel Honrada. Kasi, ang problema kasi dito is, yung China, meron silang missile defense uh, systems, no? lalo yung mga nilagay nila dyan sa West Philippine Sea. So, nag-operate po sila ngayon ng HQ-9 surface-to-air missiles. Uh, ito ay nilagay doon sa mga iba't ibang isla dyan na, na reclaim nila, yung mga fake islands na ginagawa nila, including on the ones that we claim. Uh, at ang problema dyan is, itong mga defense missile system na HQ-9 surface-to-air missiles na meron ng China, it can actually bring down uh, intercept missiles with a max speed of 4.2 no? e ang problema itong su supersonic na binili natin ma yung max speed niya 3 pa lang no? at but yung Chinese warship no? yung mga type 055 cruisers nila uh, at saka yung type 052D uh, destroyers nila equipped din sila dun sa uh, version nila shipborne version ng HQ-9B no? yung tinatawag na HQ-9B um, so Medyo hindi clear gano maging ka-effective itong BrahMos na ito in an event of conflict with China and the West Philippine Sea. But, this is where I think the real relevance comes from. Una-una, ang India po ay nagde-develop ng BrahMos 2, no? More advanced version, hypersonic, so these ones can go to the max speed of 5 and who knows, what? Ang China po, nag-develop na siya ng hypersonic missiles, nag-develop na po yung Russia, Ch US is also getting there, but India is now also in the mix, no? And together with Russia, they're developing the hypersonic one. Meron din silang upgraded version ng land-based BrahMos na binili natin, at yung India is building now a huge, you know, uh, you know, 
tens of hectares of, of uh, facility para mag-mass produce ng mga missile na yan. So, because Philippines ay yung first country na bumili ng major armament from India, which for a very long time, importer lang talaga siya, but now they're beginning to become exporter. I think that will prepare us to actually get the more advanced versions, hypersonic me- uh, versions in the future, and hopefully maging more and more affordable yan, no? Or at least yung upgraded versions ng Brahmos. So in short, baka patikim lang yan. This is just the beginning, no? Uh, pangalawa, uh, wag natin kalimutan ng Pilipinas, sanay tayo sa mga NATO-grade American weaponry. So lampas ng 90% yata ng uh, ating mga armas ay galing sa Amerika at saka NATO technology. But itong mga supersonic missile na binili natin, itong mga platform na yan, ay medyo Russian yung technology. And I think as we buy more from Indians, we potentially buy more from Russians, etc. That means we can be more flexible at saka pwede natin mix and match yung ating supply no, ng mga advanced armaments. And yung kaganda ng India and Russia and some of these countries is that advanced yung mga weaponries nila, very affordable pa, no, relatively. no. So that gives us more options. So I think that gives the Philippines more dexterity, more dynamism. Uh, so, pwede natin i-upgrade pa at pwede pa natin mag-mix and match dun sa ating mga acquisitions. No? In fact, some of our neighbors, for instance, I think Malaysia, Indonesia, they have like American fighters, they also have Russian advanced fighters. And down the road, no, why not Russian fighters? Why not some of the advanced weaponries from, from, in, uh, from India and Russia and other alternative uh, suppliers? So, I think that's, that's a good thing. And, and lastly, remember, ang India po ay kasama dyan sa Quad powers, yung four big powers of in the Pacific with Australia, Japan, and U.S. At yung Quad din ay coordinate now with, with Europe, especially Britain and France, uh, and to the lesser degree Germany, uh, on a whole host of issues. Yung vaccine diplomacy ng China ay kinounter nila, uh, yung, uh, yung uh, efforts ng China to you know, dominate yung public infrastructure investment, they're trying to counter that. So I won't be surprised down the road, magko-coordinate din yung mga big powers na yan para tulungan yung mga mas malilit ng bansa at uh, frontline states katulad ng Vietnam, Philippines, or even yung mga bigger states in Southeast Asia like like Indonesia no to build up their uh, defensive capabilities, uh, especially in light of rising China. No? So interesting alignments at realignments na ikita natin. In, in fact, both Vietnam and Indonesia now are also in conversation with India 